Let's get back to this energy debate and Peter Dutton's big speech today where he said really the offer is there to Labor. Embrace nuclear, let's do it together. Joining me on the desk is the former Ansto CEO, Dr A.D. Patterson. Good to talk to you again, A.D. Good to see you. It was a good speech today by Peter Dutton uh, and I thought the key takeout was he's saying, hey, how about Labor? You want a reform agenda? Why don't you look at doing this with us? The rest of the world's doing it. Why not Australia? I think the consensus of rational energy people is essential. There are people on all sides of politics who want this. It's crazy to have bans in a modern democracy. I come from South Africa where we had years and years of bans before we decided to stop banning things. And it all changed. And I was recently back in South Africa and it's a much happier place and the economy is flourishing. Good to hear. Now, one of the issues, of course, Labor keeps putting up, they've given up the three-eyed fish and that sort of thing now. Now it's all about cost. And here's some of what Peter Dutton had to say when questioned about costs. We don't need to, uh, to build a bespoke reactor. We can rely on the proven technologies. And if we do that, we can avoid some of the, uh, the initial cost and time blowouts that are a feature of uh, a newest technology. Uh, that's not what we're proposing. We're not proposing to reinvent the wheel here. We want to learn from and benefit from the international experience. Well, there you go, Adi. There have been some big cost blowouts. Everyone likes to talk to the, about the, the, the Hadley C1 in, in Britain. But there's been some success stories recently, haven't there, in the, in the UAE and elsewhere. Can we do this cost effectively? I believe we can. I mean, Finland is a really interesting example because they did have a cost blowout and it was late. But the price of their electricity is now 30% of what it was before they finished and switched on the plant. So the cost argument uh, is a crazy one. This is a plant that you're going to build for 60 years and probably relicense for 80 years. You've got 25 years in a wind turbine if you're lucky and the blades don't fall off. And in the case of batteries, it's 10 years. I was a battery expert before I was a nuclear expert. So the hidden cost of the, of the transformation is the big transmission, the batteries, and everything else that you need. That's what makes me laugh about the cost argument, is they never talk about the cost of what they're doing at the moment. All that is shrouded in secrecy, uh, uh, yet we know the costs of nuclear and no long-term all that can be amortised. I want to go to this other uh, quote, this other part of what uh, Peter Dutton had to say today, and that's about the practicality of what Labor are trying to do. No country can run effectively on part-time power, on solar, wind and batteries alone. And yet the government is doubling down. It's rolling out intermittent sources of energy on an industrial scale, and it's removing 90% of essential 24-7 baseload power over the next decade, between now and 2034, with nothing to replace it. This is such a compelling argument, and for all the research I've been doing, it stands up. Unless you're Iceland with lots of thermal and hydro, there's no effective country that can deliver net zero without nuclear in the mix. We've already lost jobs in South Australia. These are not easily admitted because they were in a defence domain. Frequency control that comes with solid, reliable nuclear power is something we've lost already in South Australia. We're starting to lose it in other parts of the country. People think electricity is just something that comes out of the, the socket. But when you're running data centres, Bill Gates has just announced that he's restarting Three Mile Island to provide... You mentioned that earlier, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So... You know, Bill Gates is a smart guy. He's been in this game for a long time. Microsoft is, is restarting the second TMI plant only to power his big new data center. If we want to be in the digital economy, we've got to be in 50 hertz reliable electricity. South Australia wants to build submarines. How are they going to do that without reliable energy? The submarines got nuclear in the back. They'll have to take power out <laughs> yeah. of into the shore. <laughs> to take the power, get the nuclear engine in the sub before they build the rest of it. That's what they're going to have to yeah. do. Thanks for joining us, Adi. I it's appreciate it. So much common sense.